It all had to do with one of the dirtiest tricks real estate agents play, and we fell for it. Hey, what's up? Jeff Koga here, and welcome to the Jeff Koga Daily. All right, so I, I wanted to create this particular video. Um, I am starting my day off uh, later than usual. I got up late. Why? Because I went to sleep late yesterday. I got into the office. Um, on this this uh, quick little uh, drive to the office here, I want to talk about how uh, another deal that I lost uh, 50000 on. Now, don't feel bad for me, okay? Uh, because we will make money, okay? But it's not. we're not going to make $50,000 on it. Um, and uh, also at the same time, um, I got this uh, notice about, uh, what time did I leave the office yesterday? Um, like around 10.30, I think. Um, so I found this out about 10, a, uh, 10, p, uh, 10 p.m., right? So, um, so let me give you kind of a backstory on what happened and then I'll go into um, why it happened. And it all had to do with one of the dirtiest tricks real estate agents play and we fell for it or personally I fell for it <laughs> this call we got from a seller in the city of Hawthorne uh, in January and this particular person uh, was eager to sell because uh, you can tell by the choices of words uh, one of our guys took the call I'm listening to the call and uh, the guy basically says hey man I'll give you my condo in Hawthorne uh, if you give me fifty thousand dollars so when someone says, I'll give you uh, my, my condo for X amount of dollars, right? You already know there, there's a necessity for cash, okay? So, so they said they'll give it to us. All right, now it is a 1,600 square feet condo built in 2001, okay? So it's a fairly new condo, all right? Now, when we ran the initial comps as in comparables to see the value of what is that condo worth, we were seeing stuff at like 460-ish, or, you know 50 or whatever right so as an investor right looking to go into that area to buy that that's that's a bad deal right there's not enough uh, meat on the uh, meat, meat on it okay so so it's a bad deal all right now with that being said it's a bad deal um, our goal pivoted we pivoted from uh, trying to buy it to uh, hey let's get a listing out of this helping the guy out okay so so our guy's been following up, following up since January, and uh, uh, finally got into communication in a deeper conversation with uh, this guy, um, and uh, um, shooting text back and forth, and and I get an email super late at night, um, and he was on the phones yesterday from four to seven. I get a text from my guy that I talked to earlier, and he basically says, "Did you get my?" E oh no, he said, "Are you still at the office?" I was like, "A text." I'm gonna say, "Yeah." And uh, he calls me back, and I think he was driving home, and, uh, driving home, because he left the office, and young guy, right? And and he tells him, "Did you see my email?" And I was just like, "No, man, I didn't." So I sit down at the office, and uh, I open up my Gmail, and I click on the email that he sends me, and he basically BCC'd me on the email that he sent over to uh, the seller. And it had on there the net sheet, it had on there the listing agreement, and had on there the comparables. And he says, did you see the comps? I was like, no, man, I haven't even pulled it up yet. So, and he's all like, yeah, man, there's a comp that just sold for 500 and, I wanna say 25,000. I was like, what? Right? So I look at it, and truly, yes, that the property sold for $525,000. Now, I'm just like, huh? So he says, basically, yeah, man, this is sneaky, man. I pulled it up, and and uh, um, almost a model ma uh, model match condo uh, sold over $500,000. Now, if you're listening to this and you, and you don't have any background in real estate, uh, you're going to be like, what are you talking about? So let me explain in kind of layman terms, all right? So, so initially, seller called in. The seller has a loan on it, underlining loan. They owed about $380,000 on it, and they wanted uh, $50,000 in cash. And he was willing to just deed over the property, all right? Deed over this condo to us for $50,000. Now, if you add, what, $500,000 plus, I'm sorry, $50,000 plus $380,000, where are we at? 
430, okay? $430,000, all right? So $430,000, and then there was a almost a model match condo that sold for like $525,000. I'm kind of rounding numbers off because I'm not looking at it, all right? Um, that's, that's almost $100,000 of what we like to call gross spread that we have in that deal. Gross spread that we have, okay, $100,000. All right now it is a condo okay so it is a condo so meaning that the outside structure you don't have to fix because the association takes care of that so the repair cost on doing a condo is dramatically lower than if you're to fix up a uh, regular size house right so so I'm looking at this right and I'm just like how is that possible right so so he, he basically says yeah man um, they pulled it they, they pulled the trick on us and I was like what do you mean and he basically says yeah this condo they the listing agent listed it as a single family home all right I'll say it again the listing agent listed it as a single family home and it literally just closed now what does that mean it means that anyone that's searching for a house in Hawthorne or the surrounding area like Torrance okay or South Bay if you're if you're in you know Southern California you'll know those cities if uh, uh, when they search this, most individual who wants to buy a house, they're only going to look for a house. They're not going to look for a condo, right? So if you're trying to sell a condo, right, the, the viewers that you're, I mean, the viewers or the people who are going to search for condos are, are lower. So they're not going to search it. So this agent basically uh, listed the condo as a single family home, which is a false misrepresentation, but it's a, what's one of the oldest trick in the books, man. And guess what? Both of us missed that. I missed it. He missed it. And really, it's my bad because I should have. I should have caught this. I've been. I've been doing the business a lot longer than he has. Because if that. If I. If I'd have saw that active or pending at that 500. Well, I don't know. I should have probably. I should have probably looked at if it was even listed over 500. Then I could have probably just picked up the phone and called the listing agent to find out. Um, you know what kind of activity that they were getting. Right. So uh, the point is that we missed it. So because of the fact that we missed it. We lost an opportunity, literally, to make like fifty thousand dollars on this dinky condo, um, because to repair a condo, you know, it's gonna be like what, maybe thirty bucks a square feet, maybe that, okay? But you probably get away with like twenty bucks a square feet, um, uh, because you're not doing the outside, and with twenty bucks a square feet on a what, sixteen thousand uh, uh, square, uh, sixteen hundred square feet uh, home, it's only gonna cost you like like a little over thirty grand, right? Like thirty-two thousand or something like that, right? So. We would have been all in like at um, from 380 to I'm sorry yeah from 380 plus the 50 thousand we would have been in at uh, four uh, 430 plus another 30 is that 460 and maybe it will sell like at, at five uh, 550 or something like that right so so we had a decent I know it's slim but we had a decent amount of spread I think we could have even probably got gotten away with the repair cost maybe at even 20 grand or something like that right so so I know for a fact we're gonna make money on it so but here's a little silver lining all right if you position yourself and you have multiple disposition strategy and you work with the right people who know how to do this right because at this moment in time right now you have now you have um, now you have a choice right do you have a choice because you saw that comp do you go back to the seller and be like hey you remember that 50,000 let me give you that 50,000 right now and I'll buy it oh you could have done that right which he already said that he's gonna interview three other real estate agents so if you do that and he decides to interview those other people if those other people at least know what the F that they're doing they would see the exact same comp hopefully and they'll tell it to the homeowner right and and there's a potential of uh, him actually finding that out and guess what you lose the deal you look like a schmuck right or you do what you're supposed to do do the right thing in business which is just tell them the truth and be like hey look there's a comp right there at that price um, so the net amount that you thought that you were gonna get you're probably gonna double it because instead of four you know like 30 or four I'm sorry five 530 or 540 you're probably gonna be able to because it's not fixed up you'll probably be able to maybe sell for like 480 or something like that or 490 maybe um, and the net amount will go dramatically higher than fifty thousand dollars all right so Guess what we did? Or guess what he did? Okay, not me, he did. Uh, he went with that, 
okay? So he basically shot it over, and uh, from what he told me is that the seller was shocked that uh, that he's going to net more money than he originally thought, and he was just like, why is that? And he basically said, hey, man, <laughs> um, that's, that's, you know, that's the difference between a guy that's uh, doing this full-time versus a part-time person. <laughs> I thought that was the, that was a killer punchline, and uh, hopefully we get a listing out of it, you know? So, um, so we'll make some money on it, you know? Um, which is still cool, and this is, and again, going back to this, right? When you do real estate transaction in Southern California, right? It's kind of the beauty, right? It's 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 a gift and a curse at the same time. I tell people, right? Because if you're in a lower like price point uh, home, right, area, like the medium home price is like less than two hundred thousand, right? The chances of you making good money just on commission is, is very slim, right? Like, how many homes do you need to sell at one hundred fifty thousand dollars when you're actually only making like three percent or something like that on their side um, to make a decent living, right? You got to sell a crap load. Of home versus you know you're selling a home for like almost five hundred thousand uh three percent of that that's fifteen thousand dollars that you'll make and that means two more three more deals you have to manage two more three more uh, uh deals of influx of agents calling you two to three more deals of uh what buyers to uh work with right that kind of stuff okay and uh two to three more technically quote unquote headaches okay depending on how you look at it headaches are opportunities um so so it's the the gift and the curse in Southern California because home prices are there. So uh, I want to tell this quick story as I'm pulling into the office. I got an actual training I have to do um, in uh, time right now, 7.58, almost 8 o'clock. So I got a T minus two hours to do a live training that I'm going to be holding today. Um, so I got to finish up some of the slides. I'm updating it for new stuff. And uh, but I want to tell this quick story um, is to let you know uh, that old uh, Japanese proverb that you have heard me say, a monkey will fall from the tree right sometimes a monkey will fall from the tree and it's so true um, I should have caught that I should have looked at that and or at least told them say hey did you pull any comps from the, uh, the SFR side um, instead of just looking at the comps on uh, the condominium area right so now the next thing that we have to do is making sure that uh, the association is in good condition so we're gonna go uh, go pull some uh, look at the C CCNRs uh, reserve study report right so those are some of the reports that that uh, you're gonna have to pull from the association uh, just making sure that you got a solid solid uh, uh, listing that you're gonna be able to sell so um, it's one of those things. It's one of those things, ladies and gentlemen. It's one of those things uh, that happens in the game of real estate. And truth be told, um, uh, I made the mistake. You know, I made the mistake, and it cost us. But luckily enough, uh, we'll still make money on it. And I'm still grateful of the fact that uh, we are. And uh, that's what I wanted to kind of parlay and relay. So if you're just starting off in business, uh, just know those are some of the things that exist. Um, so make sure that uh, um, you try to look at everything in a different way. Um, and if you're an experienced person and you're looking to scale and you're looking at uh, looking at that, I highly recommend for you to get involved on, if you're a real estate agent, get involved on the real estate investor side or work with someone that uh, is really good at what they're doing, especially if they can generate leads for you, right? Um, and then you can physically close them, right? Talk to sellers and close them, get on appointments, right? There's multiple ways for you to make money, all right? So that's kind of my advice uh, that I have now. Real estate is a wealth building vehicle, all right? now um, some of my people who are listening and watching this is in the space of consulting space of uh, information publishing in the space of selling digital products um, if that's the case still learn about you know the real estate side because again as you start making money in that space of which is a high net uh, type of business if you're selling digital products you're gonna need stuff to expense off you're gonna need stuff for tax purposes you're gonna want to park your cash into something that is going to give you a much higher leverage point as well as be able to generate wealth cash flow and things like that and I believe still to this day that uh, thing that gives the small guys and gals a a opportunity to uh, create a generation worth of wealth is still real estate, all right? Um, so learn about it, all right? So that's what I got. This is Jeff Koga. I'm signing out. I got to get in. Uh, if you're, again, go to jeffkoga.live uh, if you want to watch me work in the office and the camera right behind me, so, uh, and and get a kind of sneak peek on what's, uh, what I do in the office, go to jeffkoga.live. I will uh, talk to you then. Take care and bye-bye.